So definitely you're not going to be able to really pass algebra if you don't know this formula, okay? And uh, some of you out there may not remember the formula, but maybe you can actually do the problems. But in algebra, we have a lot of different formulas like the quadratic formula, the distance formula, the midpoint formula, and this particular formula, which I'm going to, of course, tell you what it is in a second. But uh, a lot of these formulas, you know, you do need to commit to your long-term memory, okay? Uh, it's very, very important. So here, for example, when you're looking at it, if you're like, mm, I'm not quite sure, well, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You got this little small m in an algebra, that small m means something, okay? It's a very common variable that we use, and I'll give you a hint here, y equals mx plus B, okay, this M, this little small M is the same M as we're talking about there. So hopefully this, this is a massive clue on what we're talking about. And if you uh, still don't know what I'm talking about, then don't stress. Okay, I'm going to explain this fully. But this M and this M uh, are, are the concept of slope. Okay, so we're talking about slope, and you need to know how to calculate the slope. If you can't calcul calculate the slope, you're not going to be able to deal with linear equations, which is a huge part of algebra, and then you're going to have a difficult time in your algebra course, and you're going to end up with one of these situations, and we want to avoid that at all costs. The only thing that we're interested in is in you doing awesome in algebra and walk it away with A pluses and 100 percents because algebra is definitely worth learning. And if you're taking this uh, course, then, um, you know, you got to pay attention. you got to work hard. And there is a lot of little details. And, of course, I am going to teach you uh, this particular huge detail. It's not a trivial thing. you got to, you just got to simply know this. Okay, so we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, I offer many, many uh, online full comprehensive uh, math courses. So if you need to take a course, you can take one of my courses. But if you're taking a course, let's say you're taking Algebra 2 or Algebra um, what a lot of people do is they take, well, they'll enroll in my algebra course just to get my instruction and to see how various problems are solved. So I literally solve thousands of different type of problems. Very, very um, uh, beneficial. Okay, you, oftentimes, you know, when you're in class, you only have that opportunity to listen to the teacher right then and there. With my program, you have access to it 24/7, and I really teach comprehensively, super, super comprehensively, and just you know, much more than what I do on YouTube. Okay, so that's my math help program. Now, one thing that uh, you need to know if you are a math student is the importance of taking notes. All right, this is kind of like my golden rule of uh, teaching math over several decades, and that is those students who take the best notes almost always have the best grades, and the reverse is true. I've had students whose notes are just like a work of art, like even better than my notes, amazing, beautiful like everything's there and even more, okay? The amount of effort it took for that student to develop those notes, you know, just paid off, you know, on their tests, their final exams, et cetera, okay? And the reverse is true. You know, I would see those students who would come to me with the sad face and they'd be like, you know, I'm, I'm doing poor in math and, uh, you know, I, I don't understand this and, and I'd be like, well, let me see your notes. And be like, well, I don't have notes. Or if I look at their notes, it's a bunch of scribble, scribble. And that's the way I used to be back in the good old days. You know, because these students, I would observe them. Teachers see what's going on in the class. You know, they're talking to their best buddy. And they got this uh, other friend in the back of the room that takes awesome math notes. They're like, listen, I'm going to get that person's uh, notes before the test. So I'll be covered. Right now, what I need to be doing is my homework for my other class and checking out my cell phone, my social media. You know, uh, you know, listen, I'm just telling you right now, there's no shortcuts to do well in algebra or any course uh, at that. There's just too much going on. You've got to be paying attention and evidence of you paying attention and being focused is your note taking. OK, so you've got to work on that. And um, I kind of say this in a, in a light manner because when I was young and I didn't know any better, believe me, I was uh, not the greatest uh, student. I just had <laughs> to learn this through the school of hard knocks. So I'm trying to help you avoid, you know, um, these rough lessons. You know, don't go through a whole year without taking poor notes. You know, you're definitely going to have a tough time passing 
algebra. Okay, but um, if you need to start taking uh, good notes, immediately start correcting that. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer, uh, I actually offer notes. Uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link uh, to each of those notes in the description of this video. All right, so now we're talking about the slope. That's what this is. This is the slope uh, formula. So we need to, um, you know, review this quickly to make sure you understand how to use it. Now, I have a lot of other videos on the slope. You can find those in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. Um, and again, of course, you know, you can check out like my, my algebra uh, course, pre-algebra course, and I really teach this uh, thoroughly, okay? But we're gonna do a quick review here um, so you can understand, you know, the slope, all right? Now, what are we talking about here? Well, this is the slope formula, but the slope formula, we can also think of the slope you know, it's defined as the rise over the run of a line. And there's another even fancier way, uh, delta y over delta x is equal to m. This is a little bit more of a fancier uh, advanced way to describe the slope. And the slope, okay, is actually a big part of uh, calculus, okay, finding the slope of different functions, okay, this whole concept. So this, like, slope concept follows you around you know, even in, in much more advanced mathematics. But what we're talking about here, let's just do a quick X, Y graph. Okay. All right, so just, just a quick review, okay? So we have a line, right? Let's say here's a line, and that line has a certain slope to it. It's a certain angle, right? The slope is a number. It's a fraction that represents or tells us how steep that line is. So lines that go in this direction kind of rise from left to right and have positive slopes. And lines that fall from left to right have negative slopes. And lines that are completely flat, horizontal, have no slope, a slope of zero. And lines that are vertical have what we call an undefined slope. Okay, So this is just kind of like a quick review of uh, the slope. So now the slope, I said, was the rise over the run. So let's say I tell you this, uh, the slope of a line is 2 thirds. Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, it means that the line is rising up two units for every three units it runs out. So let's kind of think of it this way. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. Let's see, one, two, three units. I'm going out three, okay? So every three units I run out to the right, my line goes up two units, okay? So it forms this little, like, triangle. So here would be my line, okay, if you will. All right, so this is the run, and this is the rise. And we're trying to calculate this fraction, this uh, slope. Now, typically the way we are, uh, you know, asked or tasked to find the slope of a line, well, you can measure it on a graph, right? You can just determine what's the rise and what's the run, and then you would be like, oh, this is the rise. It's, whoops, it's 2. Okay, and my run is three, so the slope of this line is two thirds, positive two thirds. Okay, that's excellent. But uh, very, very common, okay, is the type of problem like this. Here we go, here's a little y, here's a little x, and we're given two points that are on a line. So we're given a point like this, let's say five, three, and another point down here, negative four, negative three. And we're asked, what is the slope of the line that passes through these two points? Or a line passes through these two points, what's the slope of the line? And so we need our slope formula here to uh, figure this out, okay? So I'm giving you kind of a quick crash course on slope. So if you were like lost on slope, you know, you're definitely like, you know, improving your knowledge big time, okay? But you need to uh, reinforce this by doing um, more problems. Again, this is a quick uh, review, but we need to understand, hey, what is the slope? Um, because if we're going to calculate the slope, you need to know what that what the slope is, okay? So hopefully you got a pretty good feel for this now. So let's talk about solving these type of problems, calculating the slope when we're given two points. Now, this is a very, very common place where students make a lot of errors. So they think they know how to calculate the slope better than they do, but they haven't practiced it enough or they are, you know, not concentrating enough, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, I'm just telling you right now, 
You know, if you think, oh, I already know how to do that. Well, guess what? A lot of students make errors in it. So it's worth reviewing real quick. So we'll just do this one basic prom. And if you want to see more proms, okay, about the slope, uh, check out uh, some of my other videos in my algebra playlist or pre-algebra playlist on the slope. I've done quite a bit. But let's go ahead and just apply this formula and see how it works. Okay, so here, to calculate the slope, the slope is going to be equal to, let me kind of write this a little bit better. The slope is going to be equal to the differences of the y's over the differences of the x. Okay, so you have y minus y1, and all this little subscript um, stuff, this little one stuff, tends to give students, you know, they think it's really advanced math. It's not that advanced. Here we have what? We have each point, okay, let's say the point 2, 6. If I give you that point, that's an ordered pair. It's an x, y ordered pair. So this is x and this is y. It's a pair of numbers, and there's, an, and there's a particular order to those numbers. It's a pair of numbers, and it has an order. So we call these an order pair or a uh, xy coordinate, okay? But it just represents a point on the xy plane, okay? But the first number, which you need to remember, the first number is x, and the second number is y, okay? So here, what we're trying to uh, determine is the differences of the y's. We need to subtract the y's. So what are the y's? Well, that's 8 and negative 2. Okay, now which one is y and which one is y1 doesn't make a difference. Okay, what we're just saying is you're going to subtract the y's. So this could be your y and this could be your y1. They're just two different y's. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll take uh, 8. Okay, we'll make this 8 our y and our negative 2 are y1. Now here is where students get themselves in trouble. They don't use parentheses when they're plugging in values, all right? So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So we're going to subtract the y's. So it's going to be 8 minus, okay? Now you're, some, a lot of students will be like, oh, this already has a minus here, and this is a negative 2. So I can just put, plug in the 2. Wrong, 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 wrong. This is 8 minus whatever this y value is. That y value is negative 2, okay? So this is 8 minus minus 2, all right? So now that's the first type of error that students make, okay? They uh, don't use parentheses because there's a lot of, you know, negative coordinates uh, with these points, okay? You use parentheses when you're plugging in values because it's going to avoid you uh, avoid uh, having you making these positive negative values. It happens all the time, believe me. Okay, now here's a second uh, error that people uh, make. Now, my y, okay, my first y value started with this point, 8, okay? So you're saying, well, now I have to subtract the x's, and the x's are 3 and negative 2. Maybe I can write that as 3 minus minus 2, or I can write this as minus 2 minus 3, okay? Does it make a difference? It absolutely makes a huge difference, okay? But because I started with 8, all right, 8 belongs to this point here first. So I have to start with this negative 2 down in the denominator. So you see here, I started with 8. It came from this point. So I have to start with my x. Um, when I take the differences of my x's, i got to start with this negative 2 associated with this 8. That's a huge mistake. A lot of students will be like, oh, I'll just start with this x, 3, and then they'll mess up. Okay, you will get the wrong answer. You have to start with the same point, um, the same points information. So this is going to be negative two minus what? Okay, so negative two minus the other uh, x, and that is uh, three x minus three. Okay, of course you can use parentheses uh, in here. So let's me write this a little better. So it's going to be negative two minus three. Now here I'm not using parentheses. When you see a negative value, you absolutely got to be on alert to use parentheses. So I'll leave that kind of up to you, but just try to kind of model my work here, okay? All right, so at this point, we got our differences of our y's over our differences of our x's. And now let's just go ahead and simplify. So 8 minus a minus 2, of course, is going to be 8 plus 2 over negative 2 minus 3 is what? Negative 5, all right? And a lot of students... Don't make these little positive negative mistakes. You got to go nice and slow. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 over negative 5 is what? 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. So the slope is negative 2. 
but we like to think of this as a fraction. So the slope is equal to negative 2 over 1. Okay, this is the rise. That is the run. And so this line is falling. Okay, so the slope of a line that passes through negative 2, 8, and 3, negative 2 is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1. We want to think about it in terms of the rise over the run. Okay, so again, you know, uh, a lot of students, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I know how to do the slope. If you just do like this, this and that and other thing, da, 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 da. You know, the one thing that really messes you up in mathematics is to know something like 75%. All right, so let's just say that here's a cup, and this is your skill, all right, or knowledge. And you're like, mm, as soon as I reach 75%, I'm like, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 I've had enough. <laughs> I don't need to know any more because I know a lot, okay? That's the worst thing that can happen in math. Knowing a lot is not knowing what you need to know, okay? There's, there can be a lot of students get themselves in trouble by just doing a couple few different problems, you know, and that's the problem, uh, like a homework. They'll just do one or two, one or two, three problems and be like, yeah, I'm getting each one right. I know a lot and I'm good to go. All right. I know 75%. Guess what? That's not enough. Your teacher knows better than you. Okay. Like, yes, do all the problems because there's different variations of problems. I can throw in fractions in here and decimals. I can throw in all kinds of, you know, interesting little, you know, things to make it, more challenging for you. Okay, you got to not only know a lot, you got to reinforce this by practicing. Okay, so follow the guidance of your teacher. And uh, if you're not, if you haven't heard this from your teacher, well, now you're hearing it from me. Okay, let me be your teacher. That's the whole idea of me making these YouTube videos because we want to avoid this situation. Nobody likes a sad face, especially a teacher. A teacher doesn't want to be giving these things out. We love to give out the A pluses, the 100 percents, and the stars, okay? I used to really love the stars back in the first, second grade. But um, whatever you enjoy, the A plus, 100 percent stars, hey, if you're working hard at math and you're doing great on your test, then you are earning them. And, uh, you know, this video hopefully helped you along the way. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great uh, platform, uh, especially for me because I am obsessed with teaching math and um, putting new material out there constantly. Okay, basic to advanced math. You can kind of check out my various uh, math playlist on my channel. But if you really want my best um, help or my full instruction, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.